Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm so glad to have you here. If you do enjoy this channel and you like all that this channel is about, thank you so much. But also don't forget to subscribe if you're catching me. My name is Gatleo. Welcome to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget to like the video. So as you can tell in the title of the video, this is the what I wish I knew then video that I know now. And um, I find it very important to do videos like this from time to time like a similar one that i did was around my birthday when i talked about the 35 things that i've learned in the 35 years of my life but this time around we're going to talk about what i know now that i wish i knew then or vice versa it depends on how you want to say it like i said it earlier on um but yeah welcome to the channel welcome to the video I have learned quite a fair number of things over the years and I really would like to share with you not only as a content creator but as a person who's got feelings and who goes through stuff you know work struggles life struggles family struggles relationship struggles I'd like to share with you some of the things that I have learned uh, recently or over the years that um, I think would be important for you guys to note and notice going forward uh, for your own lives, for your personal growth and self-development. So let's get into the video. I think um, nothing is more valuable than relationships. Nothing is more valuable than relationships. I've learned over the years that it is so important to place work, value, trust, strength in building relationships and in working on the relationships that you have with your family members, with your colleagues, with your friends. Um, no man is an island and we surround ourselves with the people that we love and we care about all the time. But it is important to place a lot of significance in building those relationships and nurturing them. And I've learned over the years that it is so important because mm -hmm. these are the things that form a large part of who we are. These are the relationships that help us see the world through the eyes in which we see the world. So how you work on your relationships or how you treat the relationships that you have with others is really, really important and, and, and forms a foundation of what you see when you look out into the world and the relationships that you form with other people. So it is, it is so important to place value on working on those relationships and nurturing them. So that is something that I've learned over the years with relationships with friends, relationships, you know, personal relationships, but even relationships with family members that has taught me that the more time, energy, um, love that you put into relationships, whether you're with your brother, your sister, your parents, uh, your lover, your friends, it's, it's, it's a good way in reaping the best rewards from those kinds of situations and circumstances. So listen, don't hear, listen. And I find that listening is so important. There's a skill to listening. Now, if you follow this channel, you know that I am at school and I'm studying to become a life coach. And one of the things that I have learned in the previous course that I was doing in the previous unit that I was doing is different types of listening, different styles of listening. And um, the different types of listening that I've learned is that, you know, there's competitive listening, there's attentive listening, there's active listening. And one of the best forms of listening that you can do is to be an active listener. Engross yourself in conversations that you have with people. You are so much more likely to learn so much more about a person or a situation or a circumstance or a, a view on something than you would ever learn if you are competitively listening. So if you are competitively listening, it essentially means that you are listening with intent to respond. So you want to give your view. So you're listening, but you are really more concentrated and focused on what you're going to res to say in response to what is being told to you. And I've learned over the years, more especially in the last two years or so, that it is so important to learn how to listen without the intent of immediately responding, to learn how to comprehend what that person is saying, be the pulse of the conversation. And um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing because you pick up on golden nuggets that you wouldn't necessarily 
notice if you were just hearing what that person is saying. So listening is an incredibly good skill to have. And I feel like a lot of people seem to think that, oh no, I'm a good listener. I listen really well. Um, but sometimes it takes a lot more than just hearing what is being spoken to you um, when you actually have to comprehend and put yourself in the situation or the shoes or the position that that person is in. Try to understand where they are com coming from without putting yourself first. Um, and that is what active listening is about. And yeah, I learned over the years that uh, listening is not as easy as we think it is. Uh, we kind of tend to make whatever we're listening to about ourselves as opposed to actually making it about the person who's actually speaking to us. Another thing that I learned, which is so, so important, and given the fact that I'm constantly busy with everything that I'm busy with, work-life balance is so important. Doing things outside of work is so important. Doing things outside of school is so important. You have to find a way to formulate some sort of equilibrium with your life. A balance where you can do what you have to do, what you have to do for your work, for your job, for whatever that you are doing in terms of growth and self-development, personal development, uh, whatever may be bringing money in, in streams of income of money and things like that, but you have to balance it out with actually living your life and doing things that you love to do, like read or go to the gym or go hiking or spend time with family, friends. Creating some sort of work-life balance is so important so that it creates stability in your life and you don't get overly overwhelmed. Um, that's a terrible sentence, but you don't get overwhelmed with um, one part of your life because you have other parts of your life that sustain a balance within you where you can manage all the facets of your life together. Um, so I've realized that work-life balance is so important to cultivate. It helps you rehabilitate who you are. It helps you grow as a person. It helps develop you even more as a person, um, learning what it is that you like outside of what you have to do. So reading for me is one of those things. Content creation is one of those things. I love doing it as much as it is a job, it is another stream of income and all of that, but I love to do it. I can't sit longer than two weeks without pointing a camera in my face um, because I feel the connect with you guys and I feel the connect with, you know, learning something new or, or, or giving you guys advice on something new. Maybe you might pick up something in my videos that you never thought of and that's now like, um, you know, a school of thought for you and it gives you something to think about at the end of the day. That is so important for me. It creates that balance for me, right? I enjoy being with my partner, my family, my friends. Um, sometimes I enjoy just crashing on the couch, you know, watching a Netflix series, just getting out of my mind and all the responsibilities that I have by giving myself the opportunity to just switch off and watch mindless entertainment or watch great entertainment really. Um, and, and yeah, create that balance for myself. So it's really great at sustaining a very balanced life and, um, stability for your life. Um, work-life balance is so, so, so important. Also, another thing that I learned over the years is the power of saying I'm sorry. So we can always talk about the power of letting go, the power of apologies, the power of this, the power of that, but the power of actually learning to say you are sorry and bring it and say it actively out of your mouth has great healing properties for you and the person that you are saying sorry to. Um, and I think for me, one of the biggest um, influences I'm sorry with the ums. <laughs> I've, I've been filming some other content today and I realized that I say um a lot. Uh, see? <laughs> For me, one of the biggest influences that taught me the power of saying I'm sorry is my sister. I was really, really terrible at saying I'm sorry, especially when I had wronged someone. And Naledi was the one who actually made me realize that. She was the one who said, we get into a fight, Katleo, we get into an argument, we get into a disagreement, and you hear what I'm saying, but you never actually say you're sorry. You never actually play the part of apologizing 
for the role that you had in us being in the place that we are in today. And my sister was the biggest, biggest, biggest influence uh, of that for me because I, I really didn't think that... I was in denial, man. I used to think that I do say sorry. I know how to apologize when I'm wrong. I do whatever. And now, I actually think I went all the way overboard because I even say sorry when I don't need to say sorry, but I'm learning to unlearn that. And But there is really great healing powers for that person and yourself that you are apologizing to just by saying authentically, honestly, from the bottom of your heart and meaning it just by saying, I'm sorry. I really do apologize for what I said to you. And... I, I notice, I note how it has made you feel and I see the role that I have played in that and I do apologize sincerely. There is a great power in saying that and um, it took me a long time, years and years of living on this earth to actually realize the power in apologizing. The next thing that I learned is do not let time control you. You will be controlled by time. And you'll always feel like you never have enough time. And we, we, I feel like that's normal, right? You never have enough time. Like you feel like there's not enough hours in a day. You could be doing more. I wish I could wake up a lot earlier, but I already wake up at 5. I already, I'm part of the 5 a.m. club. I'm part of the 6 a.m. club, whatever it is. And I go to bed at 11, 12 at night just so that I can get in at least six hours of sleep each night. But do not let time control you. And I realize that time management is important. And I've learned that over the years and I've shared that quite a lot on my platform, on my channel, where I've talked about the importance of managing your time so that time doesn't control you and you control it. Um, so for me, managing my time meant managing my responsibilities, knowing when I'm going to do what, prioritizing what comes first, what comes after, uh, prioritizing short, long-term goals, that kind of thing, and um, making sure that I do what needs to be done for the sake of where I need to be, for the sake of my personal development, for the sake of my growth, for the sake of my healing. And time management plays a very, very huge role in that. Um, all right, the three R's for me, rest, rehabilitate, and retreat. I feel like this is so important, especially given the fact that I am a content creator and I've got other things going on, life, school, work, everything. It is so important to rest, to rehabilitate, uh, to rest, rehabilitate, and retreat in whatever order you would like to do those things in. Uh, rehabilitate is just learning and growing, self-development, self-growth, healing, the process of it all. Um, rehabilitating to be a better version of yourself, working on yourself. Do you need to do therapy? Do therapy. Do you need to do... Um, you know, uh, uh, work on your relationships in some way, somehow. Do you need to do yoga? Do you need to do whatever? Do you need to work on your mind? Rehabilitate to become a better version of yourself. Rest, it, it is what it is. It is what it says it is. You have to rest. You can't continuously be going, 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 going. At some point, you need to rest. And I feel like I take that part of my life very, very seriously. Um, over the week... During the week, I do not sleep later than 11. If I say that I've slept late, it's 12 o'clock. And that is late. And I feel really, really bad for having slept that late. But I make sure that I sleep at least at 11 and then I'm up at 6, right, or 5. Now, for me, that's enough hours of rest. And I don't compromise on it. And also with uh, creating content, I create content in bulk like I am today. I'm creating content in bulk, but it's because I know that over the next couple of weeks, I want to rest and not overthink the fact that, oh my gosh, I still need to record. Oh my gosh, I still need to do this. The only thing that I worry about recording 
or concern myself with recording are the weekly vlogs because that you do weekly as opposed to these sit down videos where I can record four in one day and I'm covered for, for the next two, three weeks. So um, rest, rehabilitate and retreat. And retreat means in this instance, detoxes, like taking time away from social media taking time away from friends, family, taking some alone time for yourself, retreat, take some time away, take a trip, do whatever it is that you need to do to just take some time away. Uh, for me, that is what retreat means. And um, the three R's are a very, very important and fundamental part of my life and who I am. And I've realized over the years that they work really, really well for me to constantly remind myself of the three R's, constantly remind myself. And this one is very simple and I think we've all heard of it before. Nothing worth having comes easily. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Relationships, um, content, a large following, um, whatever. A good job, a good life, money. Nothing worth having. And the key word is worth, right? Nothing worth having will ever come easily. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the work. Nothing comes for free. Um, I remember when I was having this conversation with my sister last night and we were out having dinner. And I said to her, it's crazy how much work we both put into our platforms. We both put in so much work. Now my sister's got work outside of her platform that is also her work, um, you know, like with Channel O and all of that kind of stuff. And then I've got my work, which is outside of work, right? Being in construction, project management. And then there's this, right? Which is work as well for me. But this is the one kind of work that I love to do. Like marry yourself to your job in that love it, right? Love what you do. Because then it doesn't feel like a job. It's not a cliche. It is a cliche that they say that. But there's a really huge, large, real element of truth to that. Um, so marry yourself to what, to your job, but, but marry yourself in the sense that let it be something you love to do. Um, but nothing worth having comes easily. The life that you want to live is not going to come easily. Nothing's for free in life. Everything comes at a cost. And a lot of the time it comes at the cost of our time, our sleep, our energy, our, uh, rest. Um, it comes at those costs. We say that we want to sleep at 10, 11 o'clock at night, but we end up sleeping at 1 because we're editing. It comes at that cost. Nothing comes easily. And I've learned that over the years, that nothing comes easily. And I, and, and I feel like I've learned that more especially with this, with this, with creating content, that nothing, nothing comes easily. What I've also learned over the years, especially once I, you know, when I realized that I, when I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and when I was diagnosed with depression and I started talking about it, what I realized is people massively undervalue transparency. Um, people feel better keeping things closed off, keeping things hidden. Um, I have my phone in my hand because that's where I write my notes, in case you're wondering. Um, people massively undervalue transparency. And that, ironically, is what makes transparency so just, just, um, it makes transparency so powerful. It makes transparency so authentic. It makes transparency so remarkable in its own way where people attach themselves to transparency. But the, the fact that you are opening up about certain parts of your life, your anxiety, your depression, your family life, your personal life, your this, people value, they massively undervalue that. Um, and when I'm specifically focusing on difficult subjects, I'm not focusing on the fact that you are open about your relationship or your marriage or whatever. No one cares about that. That's fine. Uh, you can be open about things like that. But there is a huge undervalue of difficult topics. And that, ironically, is the one thing that makes someone, anyone, 
something so true and authentic and powerful and remarkable. And um, I would rather be connected to you guys because you feel like I'm authentic and I value being transparent about certain parts of my life and certain struggles that I go through. And uh, you connect yourselves with me in that way. I value that because I value seeing that in some of my favorite creators as well. Yeah. Those are pretty much the things that I have learned now that I wish I knew then. And I think it would have changed the trajectory of my life quite a lot if I knew those things then. But I know them now. And yay, yay, yay for self-development. Yay for personal growth. So I'm still happy that I've learned them anyway, irrespective of what time or stage of my life that I'm in, that I'm learning them. And uh, yeah, I wanted to share that with you. What have you learned now? that you wish you knew then? What do you know now that you wish you knew then? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments down below. And I'm going to go, going to film one more video, and I'm going to go and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, sayonara. If you like the video, please like the video. I'll see you in the next video.